Welcome back to DS Trucks. In today's video, I want to show the damage from plowing snow, towing trailers, doing landscape work with our pavement princess. What type of scratches, dents, and dings do we have after one year of putting it to work? But before we jump into the video, I'd like to thank Limitless Auto Works for making such a cool product that we have installed on here. We have the ability to strobe our headlights basically it's a module that gets installed on the truck it interfaces between the headlight and the harness on the truck there's no cutting or anything of the vehicle and it gives you the high visibility that you would normally install all the flush mount lights which is a lot of work and very expensive a lot of wiring a lot of special skills required compared to this where almost anybody can install it the only thing you really have to do is take off the fender liners and you can uh, put this on your truck without cutting splicing anything like that right now you don't see the c-ring splashing because the truck's been sitting for too long but as soon as i touch the door so i touch the door now the c-rings are gonna flash for maybe like the next hour or so before the truck even turns that circuit off in the gateway to where the c-rings can't flash and you can change the pattern you can add more modules you can make the top flash you can make the mirrors flash but anyway let's dive into the video what type of damage dents scratches have we gotten on our truck from plowing snow salting spreading salt which is one of those things where if you're spreading salt you're just rusting your truck out presumably so let's take a look at it at the truck and see where we have damage now one of the one spots where i noticed we have some 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 scratches is right here on the hood i believe when we were plowing snow the truck went underneath like some low hanging branches which tends to happen when we are which tends to happen when we are uh, plowing you drive the truck over some low hanging branches and I do remember hitting one and look at that dang gash I don't know if some type of paint correction can get that out but that's one of the scratches that I've noticed uh, on the truck that's probably the worst of the scratches when you come along the side you don't see too much i know one of the guys when we were plowing snow had to jump into the bed of the truck and he stood on top of this fender flare like it was a step and i'm like dude did you really just stand on that it's fiberglass and he just like thought it was a step he stood on it so ford if you're watching not only do guys want steps on the bumpers and on the bed they want the steps to be the fender flares apparently so <laughs> it didn't do nothing really it didn't break nothing maybe a scratch but nothing crazy the side steps where a lot of people were complaining have been a godsend had been really good uh used all the time stepping on those the bumper steps not quite as much use as the side steps but still i mean not a bad not a bad deal to have uh one thing we have noticed is our tail light on the side with the exhaust is warping hopefully that shows up on camera it's all bubbled on this side almost like the heat from the exhaust is getting to the tail light uh very weird when when i use this truck a lot with the generator being on board i do use the pro power on board for charging batteries and i wonder if this exhaust is getting so hot that is melting in the tail light. Now, when you look at the melt, it does seem to focus right around where the exhaust is, right along the side here, and there's no warping along the rear, only along the side where heat will kind of rise up. No real warping though on the um no warping on the on the uh, fiberglass or anything like that, which I don't know. Maybe the fiberglass is going to have a higher melting point than the uh, than the, uh, the tail light. But for some reason, this tail light is just not doing well with this heat. So that would be one of the casualties. Uh, one of the concerns I know a lot of people have was rust on these bumpers, and you do see a little bit of rust on the bumper, but it's kind of normal for chrome to do that. So that's just a little bit of a surface rust. Uh, one of the things about having this truck is I really wanted to do some preventative stuff to prevent it from rusting and corroding, but I didn't get around to doing anything. I just drove it and rinsed it off with uh, the quarter car wash after every event, whenever I could after the uh, 
sleep after you know you have to sleep before you can wash the truck because that's how hard it is sometimes but when you look at the uh, axles and stuff you can see that they are rusty the hubs are a little bit rusty uh, nothing crazy but you can definitely see that the corrosion starting and uh, I just I haven't done anything underneath where I could have gotten undercoated or could have taken care to do something but I did not do anything and you can see it's just rust it's a little bit of surface rust the factory paint job did kind of sort of hold up a little but uh yeah let's take a reach in here and see doesn't feel too bad on the universal joint there you can check one of the things you want to really check with these fords that are plowing snow or probably any model or make is how much uh, how much grease is being retained in your brake guide pins for your rotors now if there was a way to administer some grease maybe if you could pull this back and take the tip of a silicone 4 rated grease and put it into this and then re-push that shut maybe I'll do a video on that make sure I get that sealed back up little bit showing there but ultimately I'll probably end up just taking the brakes off and just greasing these uh, maybe doing like a brake fluid flush or something just to be you know politically correct uh, that would be something worth looking at but as far as the frame is concerned we're not seeing a whole lot of corrosion but I will slide under the truck and maybe we can see something under like is the salt getting to this girl or what so Let's uh, jump on the creeper, slide up under there, and see what we see. Okay, getting up under the truck and taking a quick look here at our situation. It seems like the frame is holding up pretty good. Now, maybe next year I'll do some preventative spraying underneath here to prevent rust. But they do a real nice job e-coating their frames and... Uh, Usually you start to see the rust form on the welds and you do see a little bit on the welds But nothing crazy as we look underneath the truck here creeping on and under Our beautiful wonderful DPF That you can see underneath with all this emissions crap and it is holding up as far as corrosion. I know these straps tend to rust and if you really look you can see there's some salties left over kind of right there but um yeah you can see just the surface rust i was i was thinking maybe i'll be really ocd and kept try to catch you know some of these components before they got surface rust because these components were honestly pretty clean before i started plowing but it's normal for them to be covered in rust and that is i didn't have time to be all OCD crazy. It probably would have washed off anyway off of this surface. Uh, so, looking at here, our hangers are still good. A little bit of, very little bit of surface rust. This frame's really staying pretty clean. Um, let's take a quick roll over to the rear. Okay, headed over to the rear. You can see, you know, th this component here, this is something to really look at because it doesn't uh, have the protection and it, you can see that this fastener is corroding and it's connected to the exhaust so it wouldn't be outside of the realm of possibilities to have to one day service this exhaust and only being one year old these fasteners uh, already show a good amount of corrosion especially since we've been salting with the truck and it's going to be a good idea maybe I do some preventative maintenance on these fasteners Maybe I get some high temperature paint or something or just even grease and just put it on there to maybe it'll stay there and prevent some of that from getting a little bit too out of control. Back here, they use a different fastener and it's staying clean, but up there, no, on the exhaust part, on the DPF expensive part. So it's actually the, the tube has a better fastener than the actual DPF exhaust uses a cheaper fastener that that's just corroding like nobody's business so it's actually literally part of the dpf 
So, uh, yeah, so this pipe is uh, the last few feet of no emissions crap components on the truck. The, everything else in front of it is emissions all the way to the engine. So, looking at the rear diff, um, let's see what we got going on back here. It's holding up okay, but, you know, the, the corrosion is just starting to break through the paint kind of is what it is for the situation it's uh just a little bit of surface rust on there nothing crazy comment below and let me know what you think there's your springs and all i'm gonna th do next year i think is just do a spray oil across the rear end maybe i'll spray oil the spring pack because when they get rusty they get real noisy as the springs wear and as they age and as you're introducing a truck to so much corrosion you just get rust or noise and squeaks out of your rear springs but uh, ours are holding up okay the frame is holding up okay the beautiful thing about these Fords is they are aluminum trucks and the cabs just are not rusting on these especially for the salt or whatever I guess they use a good enough grade of aluminum to where it's not gonna rust even if it chips it doesn't rust because there's levels to the aluminums that you can get, you know, whatever the rating is for that aluminum. In our case, uh, I, I've made some things out of 6061 aluminum. I'll show you that. Oh, so this device over here, it's what we use to hold our snow blowers. This is uh, made out of 6061 aluminum, and it is exposed to some serious heavy duty salt and it isn't corroding but that's just the grade of aluminum that we have here whatever they use on these trucks is obviously good enough to withstand corrosion because as much as many as these trucks that i've owned and as many have i chipped up and driven in the snow salt crab none of them have rusted so uh i guess we could take a quick look at the interior all right so popping over into the interior uh you can see the seats have held up well. One of the things about these seats is some of the some of the more comfortable seats I've had in one of these Fords. Uh, I could sit in these things for 30 hours straight, and they're the best seats that I've ever had in a Ford. Uh, but yeah, they're holding up good. Let's take a peek at the driver's side. All right, here looking at the driver's side, same thing. A little bit more wear, but nothing crazy, and everything's just holding up good. Uh, I need to, uh, just to put in perspective how much salting we're doing, you can see just a little bit of rust forming up on the screw here. And after a couple of years, that screw will start to show rust and the seat will start to make a little noise. But uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty much abusing the truck, but it is holding up. And that is why I like to get Fords because ever since they went to the aluminum, it put the truck in a different class. It's now a truck that can handle way more uh, corrosion than any of the others it can already handle more abuse than the chevys just in my opinion because of the uh independent or the solid front axle that you get with the fords but the chevys have that independent front axle which is more for comfort and uh i think less durable but i do know that over the years chevy has tried to beef that front end up to make it stronger than or at least as strong as the fords but I think that in them doing so, they've made their ride stiffer using those torsion bars and all kinds of crazy stuff that they got going on. I think they've made their ride stiffer than the Ford. The Fords, being a solid axle, they ride pretty good, but you got to understand that you can get the heavy service front end and it's going to ride rough compared to a lighter service front end that is available with softer springs. I've always gotten the heavy service, so I've always had a rough ride. But looking over here, I'm gonna grab the light so you can see this a little better. Looking over here, I've got a tear in my boot. Right there, if you can see that. There is a tear right on that boot, and I got a little noise on the front end. That's a first for me. Now, one of the things about this truck is they've eliminated all the grease points except for one. There's one more grease point, and it's right 
here. And that is the last casualty that I know of. Is it the front end has a slight noise and I uh have a tear in this boot. I can actually set this camera up and see if I can get this thing to uh make this noise. Alright, let's see what happens. Alright, let's see here. I don't know if that's showing up on camera. I'm actually curious myself because I can just hear it, but nonetheless. That's pretty much it for the casualty reports. Um, I don't know if that was showing anywhere on camera, but I need someone almost to help me joust the steering wheel while I'm uh, here, but I am alone. But anyway, that's it for the video. My name is Sean. This is DS Trucks. Check out Limitless uh, Auto Works. I'll put a link maybe somewhere. But I can't wait to get some more modules to put on the truck because that is pretty dang sick. But anyway, my name is Sean. This is DS Trucks. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Over and out.